Welcome to Top 35 Help Desk Tickets with Solutions. My name is Irvin, also known as Kobo Man. This video is based off tickets that I've made videos for in detail. So those videos show in detail on how to pick up these tickets, on how to work these tickets, meaning how to note them, how to contact the customer, things to ask. So what I'm showing you are tickets that I've completed and made videos for. So if you want to check out the playlist, I highly suggest you do that, which I will make come up in the top right hand corner of this video. And for this video, since this is 35 examples of what you can expect working help desk, I highly suggest that you also watch the entire video. And if you got one second, please click the like button. So again, in this video, we're going to go over these tickets, which are 35 of them. And in my opinion, are the most common ones uh, that I can think of um, that we're going to learn about. So we're going to go over them really quickly. And uh, again, if you want to check out the details ones, check out the playlist that is linked. Okay, number one ticket is my monitor is not working. So, of course, you know, you want to check the basic things when it comes to a connection. Make sure the monitor is turned on. Check all of these common sense things when it comes to monitor not working as a help desk. You will get this fairly often. Monitors go bad. You know, they're just hardware that wears out. They get old. People use them all the time. But, you know, you just want to make sure you check uh, all the cables or ask the user to check all the cables. Make sure everything's connected. Ask them if you see a power light on is it powered on is it sometimes even the computer is not even turned on and they think a monitor is working monitor is not working sometimes people confuse a monitor with the computer that they have you know things like that make sure you go over the most common things and if the computer or i should say monitor needs to be replaced then you replace it and you make arrangements for that Number two example here is a website not working. In this case, here's an example of a website. So yeah, this is very typical. Sometimes the entire website will go down and uh, it could be a website that belongs to the company. It could be an outside website that's used by users as part of their job, or it could just be a wrong link. So these are all things you have to kind of check with the user, ask them, is it just for you? or you know ask them for what the link is that's what i would personally do i would ask him what is the link that you're using and then you would test it yourself see if it's working if it's not working for um, anybody if the entire you know business is affected by it the, uh, by it uh, by this issue then you would contact the people that are in charge of that website whether it's for your company or outside of it and then if it's just a wrong link well you know how to resolve that make sure they get a correct link Number three example here is I need login access to the web server. So in this example, this user wanted access to a very specific server, which if you can grant access to, you would simply grant them that access. If you don't have the ability to grant access to a specific web server, then you would have to talk to your supervisor, see who can, and to see if they're even allowed to have access to this web server. Chances are if somebody needs access to the web server, then they might be like a web developers or something you know or some kind of a system admin those are all things that you have to check but main thing to consider here is to make sure that they are allowed to have access to it before you can grant them access uh, at all number four example here is i have two monitors but both have the same picture this is a simple solution monitor uh, is just or i should say desktop is just being cloned to the second monitor so what they're what's going on is you just have to extend to the second monitor so that the the picture spans across both the monitors very simple you go to the windows settings and just change that here's another one my monitor is not working again monitor issues can come up often um, and sorry i already talked about this one but it came up again and this is because i created a different scenario in which monitor is not working and for that i talk about in details and if you do want to check out those uh, videos this you certainly can again it's linked there and so it's same deal you know make sure that you know monitor is not working in this case it happened to be a dead monitor in which case we you know workaround was to he will use the second monitor for the time being and so 
what happens is if you have two monitors this is what this, this situation was you have two monitors and then suddenly they say my computer is not working but what's happening is that the main monitor um, is not working so if you test it by unplugging it from the video or just pl unplugging it from the back of the computer the second good monitor will start to work so in this case customer decided just to use one until they get the replacement so keep in mind this can happen sometimes the monitor will not be working it would look like it's turned off but the image will still be extended to the second one but until you log in then they may not get even a picture on the second one at all so it kind of looks like the computer is dead in this case you just have to check that and you can test by having user unplug or you unplug the monitor from the back of the computer and i mean the uh, video connection itself not necessarily unplugging it from power because computer knows that there is a second monitor or that there is a monitor connected to it even if it's broken sometimes that part of the hardware will work it will be sending a signal to the desktop or a laptop that there is a monitor connected but yet there will be no picture because it will be a physical hardware issue of the monitor so the way you test that you would unplug it from the uh, video connection so that way it goes back to using just the one that, that, that is working fine moving on my program is not working so this could be anything in the description it says every time I click on a program icon nothing happens this is very typical when a program is deleted and all that there is left over is just the remnant of it which is a dead icon that goes to nowhere you probably seen this when there is a broken icon you click on it and the windows would say well this shortcut doesn't go to anywhere do you want to delete it this is probably what happens sometimes users assume that a program is just a link to a website because sometimes businesses push website links or which they create icons for to the people's desktops so they sometimes assume that's a program which is not it could just be a website link check all of these things but if you need to repair the program or reinstall the program this is something you might want to do somewhat common not super common but somewhat common and kind of leaning into it here it is the following one which is I'm missing internet shortcuts folder so what happens is again sometimes businesses will try to organize these most commonly used uh, websites into a one folder which is called folder redirect and you can redirect these to everybody's desktops and if they are missing um, then you simply just uh, replace them however uh, th that you may you know may want to do that you can even ask them uh, hey do you know your friends or your co-workers PC name I guess not so, not friend I guess if it's a friend that works at the same company if you know their PC name can you give it to me or an IP address so that way you can backdoor into theirs copy theirs and put it on their desktop that's something you can do as well here's another one not receiving new emails and it says here my Gmail is not working I can see my old emails but the new emails come through nor can I send emails to people and here is an error for it it says not connected so this usually means there's a connection issue because this is very specific to Gmail and you can resolve this by resetting Chrome if it's not a connection issue but I've seen this come up when you have internet of course check all of these things make sure the internet is working first right um, or you know their local network is connected um, you know making sure that there's at least local area network not just um, internet um, then if that's the case you can in, if it's Chrome that's being used then you can reset the Chrome to see what's happening but if it's like an Outlook um, issue you could have an inbox that's full and it's not receiving emails so what you want to do is make sure that the inbox is big enough in size take more emails or delete some of this old stuff like old emails ask the user to delete all the emails or uh, a lot of times attachments that are um, meeting attachments that are in the, in the calendar or something like that make sure you can delete those to make space because sometimes people these they, they can take up space my point is make space so that the inbox can receive new emails uh, if that doesn't work then you can of course try to repair outlook and all that but i would try this first because this is most likely what's happening here and uh, of course check to make sure that you know the connection is there 
for sure. Moving on, here's more email stuff. I can't access my email, see attached. And this specific example is for Microsoft Outlook. And uh, let's see, it's asking me to log in. So this usually happens when you reset your password or your password has expired and you can't log into Outlook. This is what usually happens. So I would check their uh, the main credentials or the main login, ask them if they changed their password recently, this and that. And chances are that their password got changed somehow and they just need to update it. Um, and then after you reset their password, you can have them reboot the computer, use the new password, or after you reset them, they can just put, put, punch in the new uh, credentials that they have, meaning the new password that you created for them. I've seen this happen um, quite often when people use Outlook and they change their email, but it hasn't replicated on the computer or changed their password, but it hasn't replicated and um, uh, they haven't... Uh, uh, updated and the way you can simply replicate the new password is you lock the computer and then use the new password from the domain because keep in mind you're using login credentials from the active directory given to you by the domain so th this is how you make sure that your computer has the new password for the domain okay moving on i need help installing a printer you know this happens a lot people you know new people usually whenever they're trying to connect to the printer that they are um, that there are, you know, that they need for their work. And, they, you know, it says here, for example, you know, I'm trying to add the printer to my computer, but it's not showing up. So you can do it manually. You go into the add printers and just add the printer. You just have to ask them for the printer name, IP address, and uh, meaning you can ask them for their host name, IP address, and you also need the name of the printer. So that way you make sure you get the correct printer drivers. So yeah, this one is fairly straightforward. You know, this is what I would do and just add their printer, however that's done. Um, meaning that, you know, some companies have a tool that lets you, you know, pick, you know, printer in the office, blah, blah, blah. And then you pick it and it just installs it. You know, sometimes they do that, but I usually just do it manually, meaning I go to add printer and then add the network printer or whatever it is. Okay, here we go. PDF files don't open, you know, and then the description itself here is for, says, for some reason, PDF files do not work. It could be file association, but a lot of times PDF uh, viewer or uh, was it Adobe Reader is not installed. You can make sure that's installed. And if it's still not working, make sure that you associate it with it. Because a lot of times you go to a website, you click on a PDF and it downloads and it tries to open it, but it doesn't know how to do it. In that case, you have to change the file association, meaning you tell the Windows operating system to use Adobe to open PDF files. A very common one. Uh, and then we're going to move on from that one because I feel like that's the very straightforward answer to it and very easy, uh, very easy to remember. All right, my documents are missing is the other example. And it just says, I found that my documents are missing. And, you know, this could be anything from, you know, accidentally deleting something or, you know, things go into their recycle bin. And it could be documents from their desktop, from their shared, um, from the network share, I should say, or, or cloud storage, if you will. Now people call it cloud storage, but it's just a network location where you can store files. If it's locally, then of course, check the recycle bin. Do a control Z in case they've deleted something. Check other folders. Um, you can also restore locally some files that have been deleted. If you go to the folder where the files used to be, go to the um, uh, previous versions. I forget exactly what it's called. Restore previous version or something like that. And then you may have a copy of it um, on, on the computer locally even if your computer has Windows Restore turned on. Uh, that means you know you'd have a copy of it locally so that that might be the case if it's something that's missing from a network share um, then you would go to the share and restore it there are different ways of doing it uh, but generally speaking if you were are an admin or somebody who can um, access this share you may have the ability to actually restore um, their files from you know from a copy that's from the redundancy as they call um, you know, servers usually have redundancy, meaning they make copies of whatever is on them. So you should be able to restore that. However, you may have to do it. These are some of the ideas you can resolve. But my documents are missing is very, very common. Here's a very specific one. And 
you know, I have to say this one is not super common and I apologize for this, but it's an interesting one. I need to have Oracle DB installed on my computer. Uh, Oracle database is just a connection and used to connect to a some kind of a database used with um, Excel um, access and uh, it can be used with other things too but it's a basically a driver that you would set up just because this one is not necessarily very common it's really good to know and how to do this and I, again i have a video on these on this one specific one and it's very in detail very interesting and you should definitely definitely check that out but you may have come across issues where somebody just needs help installing something these are usually more advanced people that work on databases and they need just admin privileges to install something in which case you would use your own admin privileges as long as you're allowed to to help them install these drivers that they need whether it's oracle db or any kind of a connection drivers or hardware drivers you just kind of help them out as long as you're allowed to now this one is super super common uh, my computer is freezing twice a day you know this could be one of those things that it could just be windows updates you know check the task manager to see what's running in the background why is it freezing up is it is it windows updates and you can look at the the cpu usage ram usage if any of this is lacking uh, for example if, if the ram is too low and it's maxed out or if they're running out of space on the on the what c drive call and call c drive uh, this could cause problems too where computer is freezing up but this one is very specific my computer is freezing twice a day usually this is windows updates and they uh, try to push companies try to push these updates and not just windows updates but for like even if you have like system updates meaning of i should say software updates is what i meant to say if you have software updates like you have other software install chances are that your computer might be updating and you see a little freeze but most commonly it's windows updates and companies try to push these during none working hours or none business hours overnight and this and that so if it's happening in the middle of the day and you confirm that it indeed is updates you know advise user to keep the computer on uh, during uh, when, when they're when they're not working so that way you can get updates while they're not uh, while they're not so they can get updates while they're not using the computer basically and I've, I've seen users where they just turn off the computer at the end of the day that's a bad idea you want to keep the computer turned on so you can get updates make sure that it's turned on and not asleep so you can get updates so it doesn't freeze twice a day moving on I closed my documents without saving them okay so unfortunately with this situation uh, you, you you don't have a way to recover this if somebody closed their documents without saving it there's nothing you can do really you can just apologize and say i'm sorry there's really nothing we can do uh, you know unless it's sticky notes sticky notes saves every little thing that you type in but if it's like a word document and you close it and you say no to saving it there's nothing you can do all you can do is just apologize but when it comes to trying to fix it there's nothing you can do so just apologize and say sorry there's really nothing you know we can do uh, you know you can take a look at their computer just to make them happy but you know kind of poke around see if there's a copy of it but you know there's really nothing you can do moving on computer shutdowns multiple times a day and it says for some reason computer appears to crash with black screen randomly so computer just boom shut off as if you pulled up you know power cord uh, this can be pretty common issue when it comes to just hardware failing it could be overheating of the computer it could be bad power supply so this is a hardware issue uh, this is something you would have to have uh, hands-on type of uh, access to resolve this issue because it's a hardware issue and it could just be dirty overheating but it could be you know any of these this is something that you would have to do a hardware diagnostic but from personal experience bad power supply could be bad motherboard uh, it could be just overheating it could be just loose cpu heatsink or something like that this is something you would have to kind of check out for yourself if possible but you would have to have physical access nonetheless you know this can be a fairly common issue that shows up in help desk moving on usb drive not working nothing happens when you uh, when your usb stick is inserted 
So a couple of things that can cause this. USB is bad. USB storage is bad or USB whatever it is that they're uh, plugging in could be bad. And this, this is a specific one where it's USB drive is not working and the other reason is that company doesn't allow you to plug in a storage device on you know into your company's computer because you know security they don't want you to basically they don't want users to steal information basically so you know you can reach out to them and say i'm sorry um uh, you know if, if it's a case of that they're, they don't allow it uh, I'm sorry, but the company policy says that we're not allowed, we, you know, uh, company policy has disabled USBs. This is what I would say, you know, and not a whole lot you can do about that. But if it's a bad USB, you can ask them to try a different USB uh, port or try a different USB stick. You know, the basic troubleshooting when it comes to this, but, it, you know, keep in mind, it could also be blocked. I can't hear people on my headset. People can hear me in a meeting, but I can't hear them. So this is, you know, very, very, very common where you have to go into the system settings and configure all the sound settings to make sure that their headset is selected. And you go in and just make sure, oh, okay, what is your name of your headset? Or you don't even have to ask them because chances are we'll just one and make sure that one is selected. And if it's a meeting software type of thing like Zoom, Zoom is the most common thing nowadays, but if it's like WebEx whatever else make sure that the system itself i'm sorry i keep saying system the software itself knows that you wanted to use this specific headset very common very common but it's just a simple sound configuration just check all of these things make sure that their headset is selected sometimes the headset for some reason gets disabled go into the sound control panel and right click the view right the, right click to view all the um, disabled because by default you can't see the disabled um, audio uh, devices and if you see that it's disabled in there then make sure you enable it um, same thing for microphone if they can't you know if people can't hear them make sure the microphone is selected as well uh, here we go my computer shuts down with blue screen very common this is that you know computer stops working randomly and shows me a blue screen with a smiley face so this is blue screen of that this is hardware issue Definitely something that you have to have physical access to, you know, troubleshoot because, you know, rarely it could be a driver issue, but most of the time it's just a hardware issue and you need, you would need a physical access to it. But blue screen usually happens when you have bad drivers or a, a corrupted um, software can cause this too. But when it comes to hardware, it's most of the time from what I've seen, it's hard drive itself is just going bad um, doesn't happen as often nowadays with solid state drives but still there are still older computers out there using magnetic type of drives um, which 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 i've seen the mostly issue this issue with but you can any, any other piece of hardware can cause this for this you would have to do a full diagnostic if possible of the hardware and have physical access to it to see exactly so for example you would do a memory test you would do a motherboard test you would do a hard drive test and it's a diagnostic that you do and some computers like hps you can actually execute this so if you can pull this off over the phone and ask the user to press and i thought would think it's uh, f8 or something or f9 um, on the boot up or even delete i forget exactly i'm sorry uh, because different computers have different um, shortcuts you know and then once you press that button it will get to a screen where it says you know what do you want to do do you want to select the boot device do you want to do a diagnostic or you want to go to bio so you go to diagnostic and you can run different uh, tests like memory and this and that and it would just sometimes you would just do a general um, diagnostic of hardware which could help you but again this this is hardware issue i would highly suggest looking into a replacement computer replacing the parts or whatever very common here we go my email is not working did we do this one? Oh yeah we already did this one i don't know why it came up again i must have done it twice i'm sorry <laughs> again okay so this is the typical one where you need the password right it's okay we can go over it again so you make sure that the password is correct because it's asking them to log in make sure they're not disabled in active directory this can cause this too so you know a lot of times this happens when you change your password before or after you log into your computer so again make sure that everything replicates and this and that so it's a password issue 
access issue, if you will. Okay. All right. Moving on. It's a lot. I, I need help installing a printer. Um, I, I, did we do this one already? I think we did. Okay. All right. All right. Added printer as requested. So you just add the printer. All right. Here, here's, here's a different one. I can't log into my computer error domain not available. So somebody tries to log in, but it says domain not available. So this could be a couple of different things. This could be that the computer was dropped off the network, meaning that domain itself um, is no longer has or is allowing this host name that belongs to this domain to access the, the domain. So this could be the issue. It could also be as simple as somebody not typing in their login ID correctly. I've also seen this happen when somebody tries to log into the computer without typing in their login ID correctly. Meaning if my login ID is Kobu man, maybe I typed it in with, you know, Kubu man or something like that. And, and it's weird, but it, this does actually happen in those situations too. But most of the time, uh, yeah, you know, I mean, you can try this with the user on the phone to see if they can, uh, you know, log in, but you know, if, if you keep a computer off the network for a long time, meaning you it's turned off for like months and months, you come back from leave of absence, this can cause the problem. And then you may have to re-add the computer to the domain, or maybe even re-image it. Depends on what kind of access you have to tools, but as help desk, you might be very limited to this. Uh, anyways, make sure that they're using the correct credentials first. And if, if it's still issue persists, then have them bring the computer back to the office and then you can check it out from there, uh, you know, because you're on help desk. Um, th this is something you won't be able to test otherwise because they can't log in, period. You know, I mean, you can look at their um, actor director credentials, see what's going on there and, you know, ask them how long it's been since when was the last time it worked, you know, stuff like that. But chances are they're going to have to bring this computer back in for either re-imaging, re-adding. Um, to the domain or re reactivating back if it's been disabled, you know. So that's just how you would go about this one. Moving on, I forgot to change my password and now I can't log in. You know, so this happens quite often. You know, you can just go in and, and see what you can do when it comes to changing their password. Make sure that they're not disabled that their account, their login ID is not disabled, make sure it's re-enabled, reset their password and move on. This is way, way too common. And sometimes people don't, don't change their password at all. So it expires and now they suddenly can't log in. This happens a lot when they're working from home because you're not connected to the VPN and you can log in with your old password, but you can't go any further. You can't log the VPN because their password has expired. And now their account is their access to the, to the Active Directory or the, to their account on the Active Directory has been disabled. Hence, uh, the uh, VPN uses the same login and now they can't log in. So this is one of those situations where you have to be very careful. Uh, make sure that they can log into the computer to begin with at all if it's a remote person and once they're logged in using their old password then you can reset their password and then give them the new password uh you you, you may have to give them more of a quote-unquote permanent password if you give them a temporary password that expires they may not be able to change it at all but you may be able to change it or, or change it on their behalf and then once they're connected to the vpn then you can uh, then you can reset their password again. So that way they have their own password that you don't know what it is. Uh, alternatively, you can, you know, you can connect to their computer uh, or you can use your own VPN uh, or, or if you have like a test VPN login and, and give them that information if you're allowed to. But this is kind of a sketchy thing that you're getting into. You know, so, you know, just kind of be careful if it's a remote user. Otherwise, if it's somebody at the office, just change their password, you know, reset it, give them temporary password, and then they can change it. I'm getting computer errors and PC reboots. Oh, okay. The, this morning, I've been able to use programs and computer restarts. I had to reboot four times. This is another example of just a different issue where chances are it's just 
Windows updates or just software updates on their computer. You know, they need to make sure that their computer is turned on when they're not using it so you can get these updates while they're not using it, while they're not working, basically. And, you know, here's an example of what I told them. Uh, do you turn off your computer at the end of shift or do you keep it on? You know, and then in this example, user said, I turn it off or shut down, you know, and then I said, please leave it on so that you can get updates. This will minimize restarts and will allow for faster logins. So, you know, some people turn off their computers thinking it uses a lot of power or what, this and that. You can just assure them, hey, don't worry about it. It's not that big of a deal, you know. Just make sure it's turned on so you don't have these update issues because updates can force you to reboot multiple times. <clears throat> My printer is not working, so this is different from adding the printer. Very common. I've installed the printer, but this morning there are no driver uh this morning and there are no driver errors but still not working you know so what could it be this just could be just a configuration um issue right and you just kind of in a double check with them what did you type in this and that what i would simply do i would start from scratch since they just you know in this case just installed it and it's not working then you have to make you just you just redo it that's all there is to it or, or guide them into redoing it, make sure that they're using correct name or host name for the printer, or a correct IP address for the printer, correct driver for the printer, for the specific printer that they're using, and just kind of go about resolving it in, in, in a way where you can actually test it afterwards. The printer itself could be offline. There's a chance of that. The queue uh, could be kind of backed up. Look at their queue. In, in on the computer taskbar as well if she's got like 10 15 different things queued up then that could be an issue too you might want to flush that and reset um, their print spooler on their uh, in, in their windows operating system so reset the print spooler you know enable or disable it if you have admin privileges and this and that so you just kind of go about troubleshooting but in this case you just have to re-add it and make sure it's configured properly because she never used it but my printer is not working is very very common and you know just make sure it's redone i always do it from the scratch i always do it from the scratch and make sure i do it correctly it's installed correctly from IP address to the correct driver. And you might have to ask them, you know, for assistance. And here we go, it keeps going. Cannot add printer error. And this is what they get. Here's an example. Windows can't open, um, uh, this is the error. Windows can't open add printer. The local print spooler service is not running. Please restart the spooler or restart the machine. So yeah, if, if print, if this is the, the problem, you can just restart the spooler in the services. If you have admin access, you can just reboot the computer, right? But you, a lot of times they won't be able to add a printer at all if they're not allowed to print. So this is something you might want to check, you know, if they're allowed to print. But if it just suddenly happens, if suddenly this happens, then they can just reboot or you can re restart the, the spooler or re-enable it for them and this should fix their problem. You know, just ask them, when was the last time it worked? And they said, yesterday, it worked fine yesterday. And then you just, you know, have them reboot and or restart the principle yourself by running uh, services with admin privileges. Very interesting one. Computer crashed. Oh, okay, so it just says computer crash. This morning my computer crashed. You know, this pe people, uh, people, users, sometimes they are not very specific to what's going on and uh, they just say computer crash. But when you read the description or when you ask them, you can get more details. And this one says my computer crashed and I smelled burning plastic. So this is burning plastic is usually an indicator of uh, capacitors going bad, this and that. So it's a hardware issue. Again, we're going to have to, this one, you know, since they smell burning, they would have to bring it um, back to the office for somebody to actually physically look at. Or if you're at the office, you go pick it up and work on it and kind of physically see, open it up and see what's burning. Where's the smell coming from? A lot of times it's just power supply, but just kind of double check, you know? That's that. Um, RDP sound issue. This is a very specific one, admittedly not super common, but it says, hi, I use remote desktop to access my second PC. So a lot, some people, uh, some developers, some people, important people, 
that work on multiple things sometimes have a second computer and they want to use remote desktop but the audio coming from the computer is not working you just have to make sure that um, the, the RDP is using um, either a local or remote audio whichever they want and it's just a setting in RDP that you change okay all right moving on my local admin account is not working so again people who are doing more important stuff that they have local admin accounts um, they may come across this issue uh, and then if they are allowed to use local admin you can actually add one there for them and if you have the ability to do so so you just kind of go about resolving this just make sure they are okay and that they are allowed to have a local admin and ask them what they use it before this and that you know you might want to consult your manager about this too because uh, you don't want to just willy-nilly grant access uh, of, of, of this level to just anybody here we go my audio randomly stops working and there is an error it says here recently after computer update my sound randomly stops working reboot the pc will fix it but will stop randomly let's see what is it audio render error please restart your computer very interesting so you would get these audio issues all the time and they're always going to be different uh well I, I, maybe not always but a lot of times it will be different because people do different things but this um usually uh happens when you just need to update audio driver on the computer every time something is trying to access something and it says audio render error that means it's not able to render audio means it's not able to activate the driver so i would look into updating the driver make sure it's correct driver that's being used but yeah audio issues man happens a lot all right moving on i get a lot of email spam so when you get a lot of email spam you can just have them forward their email spam or if it looks sketchy to at phishing whatever the company is that you work for so let's say you work at google you might want to have them forward these emails to i don't know phishing at gmail.com i think i think that's actually a real um, email address that you would forward phishing emails or stuff like that but if they get a lot of email spams you can set up help them set up filters that would automatically delete these so you would just go into their email settings take control of their computer and just set up a filter to specifically filter keywords you know just make sure that they are okay with this because sometimes these filters can delete and remove uh, emails uh, that they might want to keep so if they come back to you say hey, I'm missing emails I'm missing emails well, chances are that's these filters that people, sometimes people actually set up filters on their own and this happens too. So keep that in mind. I need help with blue jeans. Yeah, blue jeans is kind of like Zoom and uh, you know, some people might need help configuring it. And I apologize, this is not, you know, this is specific to people or companies that use blue jeans. But either way, if it's like blue jeans, Zoom, uh, webex or whatever it is you just have to make sure that that it's you know configured the way they want it if they want to use a camera help them configure the camera if they want to use specific headset microphone just help them configure that this is what the this is what this is about and in that sense it's very common when somebody needs help configuring these meeting type of softwares you know here we go start button search and taskbar not working so I've seen this happen uh, where a search function stops working on the computer and you can do this by running some commands that will repair um, this problem but what happens is they try to click on things and it's not working and this is done through a PowerShell and again I have a detailed video on how to do this stuff guys so so definitely check it out it's it's not necessarily super common but it does happen and it's interesting to see how you can use PowerShell how you can invoke it with administrator privileges and just do this very 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 uh, cool to know some of this stuff you know all right moving on I can't use google.com this is just an example of I can't use a website I can't go to the specific websites and it says all other websites works fine but Google is not working right in this example, the issue is with firewall. Sometimes websites are blocked 
by firewall settings because maybe users are not allowed to use these websites and you know if you're allowed to you can remove the restrictions you can remove them from firewall group policy if they're allowed to use google.com you know if they're allowed to use youtube.com if they're allowed to use facebook.com if they're allowed then chances are you'll be able to remove these restrictions you know be careful when you when you deal with these type of issues because you can access everything else but suddenly they want to go to google are they okay with going to google are they allowed to we don't know we got to check this stuff uh, you don't necessarily have to ask the user uh, but ask them when was the last time they were able to access google.com and if they say oh i've never been able to use google.com aha maybe they're not allowed to use google.com all right here's another one and this is the last one this is just citrix networking not very common but this is something that i've come across fairly often so you know citrix uh web apps zen apps or whatnot and this is something you just have to um, reinstall and again i have very specific video on how this happens you go to a website and it downloads this little a plugin that you install and it allows you to use the Citrix remote desktop you know this and that there's more to it um, to it on, on when it comes to setup and configuration of the Citrix uh, servers and this and that and for that uh, and, and all other things check out my channel again don't forget on the top right hand corner I have the playlist of all these help desk issues and 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 even things that they can help you get this help desk job all right, guys, I hope you like this video. I hope, I hope you have a wonderful weekend. I'm going to release this uh, very soon, um, definitely over the weekend. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care and bye-bye. Uh,